for presentation by Mehul Luki. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chairman, for the introduction. Yeah, come on. Oh. Yeah, my name is Mehul Lukhi, and I'm working with Professor Mainat Kuna and Gerald Kutter at the TU Academy Freiburg. And my topic for today is a novel micromechanics approach for the understanding of fatigue in nodular cast iron. So nodular cast iron is widely, uh, widely used for us material for the different applications like a wind turbine rotor hub, then nuclear and transportation and storage cask, then uh, railway wheels and uh, gear sh uh, gearboxes and crankshafts and everything. Because it has very good uh, interesting properties, like it has very good uh, castability, good mechanical strength and ductility, but at the reduced low ma manufacturing cost, if we compare with the manufacturing cost with the uh, engineering steels. And it has some cons like, uh, it, uh, because it's uh, manufacturing by casting defects, so a casting uh, method. So there are chances that there are some casting defects in which may act as a stress riser. And uh, another uh, con is like a high influence of microstructure on the mechanical properties. So the scope of my project is to uh, develop a micromechanical material model for the material E and GJS 4, uh, 400 for better understanding of putting uh, on different parameters like uh, hardening type of matrix, shape of graphite particle, then load sequence, temperature effects, everything. And by using, uh, by developing this model, we aim to uh, develop one final model which can be used by engineers in the industry for the accurate prediction of the, uh, accurate uh, uh, lifetime prediction of the engineering components. And here, right here we can see the uh, SEM image of nodal cast iron, where this is a graphite particle and the surrounding is a Ma uh, matrix, and which we can see that it's debonded, and it's uh, debonding between the matrix and graphite particle is very easy. And now I'll present some experimental observation for low cycle fatigue, which I will be focusing on. Uh, in the 1990s, a uh, Japanese group of researchers, Komodori et al., performed low, extremely low cycle fatigue in ferritic ductile cast iron. And the symmetric uh, diagram for the uh, of this damage process is shown here. As I mentioned here, that uh, debonding between the graphite particle and the matrix is very easy, and which lead to uh, generation of the micro voids. So, he, as we increase string uh, number of cycles, so we see that first initially there will be generation of micro voids, and as the simulation pro uh, as the experiment pro uh, progresses, the these uh, micro voids are increasing and growing in the size. And after some time, it will coalesce and it will form the macroscopic crack. And uh, similar observation was also found by our, our colleagues, uh, Thomas Modich et al. at the TU Academy Freiburg. So here we can see the fractography image of uh, uh, GJS 400 after subjected to low cycle fatigue tests. And here we can see the dimple structure of the uh, nodular cast iron material. And this dimple structure clearly uh, states that uh, uh, there are severe, severe plastic deformation happening uh, between the uh, particles, so li uh, ligaments experimenting severe plastic deformation, and which leads to slackic making. So, to summarize this ob experimental ob uh, observation, so this is observation like from generation of micro voids to the coalescence. Cyclically, it's called void ratcheting process, and which is the main idea behind this uh, study explain low cycle fatigue by void ratcheting simulations. So void ratcheting is nothing but increase in void volume fraction with cyclic loading. So here another colleague has worked on a simulation and here we can see the on y axis uh, void volume fraction and here x axis is a strain. So as strain or void grows, so we can see the increase in the void volume fraction and this is called void ratcheting. And numerically, this has been uh, proved by with using cell model few cycles by number of uh, researchers, which you can see here. But the question is like none of the researchers has directly correlated uh, low cycle fatigue with, uh, with the void ratcheting. So we aim to perform low cycle fatigue uh, simulations in nodal cast time by cell model, 
which will predict the lifetime of the uh, nodular casting material. So now question comes: How can we ex uh, how can we perform the how, how can we perform the simulations? So to perform simulation, we need one simulation model. So here, as we uh, see that axis symmetric model is being created, which this represent the matrix of the material. And initially, we have considered that the graphite is a void, and this is very common practice for modeling of nodular cast iron. And shape of graphite particle has been considered as a, a sphere and as well as elliptical. And large deformation analysis in Abacus has been carried out because it's a low cycle fatigue, so high plastic strain accumulation happens. And uh, this model is subjected to strain control loading. And, yeah. So here you can see the uh, low cycle fatigue uh, simulation where this isotropic hardening material, then uh, number, uh, initial void volume fraction is 11%, and strain ratio is minus one, and applied strain amplitude is a 5%. So, as we see, this void was initially sphere, but now with the simulation, this void is growing, growing, and this ligament is decreasing the size, which experimentally was, uh, showed that uh, voids, like uh, this material uh, experienced cyclic necking, and which leads to cyclic void coherence, and after a while, it will, microscopic crack will form. So here we can see the, this macroscopic stress for the number of cycles response. So the response is like uh, the cyclic hardening is followed by the drop in the macroscopic stress. So when this drop happens, for 1% or 2%, so this, we define this point as a failure point. And this is very common in the experiment also to define failure in this kind of states. And here we can see the volumetric strain evolution with the number of cycles. So volumetric strain evolves linearly with the void ratcheting, but when this uh, coalescence is, uh, cyclic coalescence happens at the time, exponentially the strain increases because of the, uh, this void volume. So now we have developed the methodology as well as the simulation model, and now we apply different strain amplitudes for this model, and we extracted the number of cycles to failure. So, and we also studied the different uh, ex, uh, effect of different type of matrices. So if it is uh, n is equal to zero, so we consider that the operatic matrix is elastic ideal plastic, and then with increase in the hardening exponent, we increase the hardening of the matrix. So the common conclusion is like the, with the increase of hardening, the number of cycles to failure is decreasing. And this uh, data shows that the experimental data collected from the literature for the same low cycle fatigue test. First observation from this uh, curve, uh, this graph is like that, yeah, the, our model and methodology can explain low cycle fatigue in nodular cast time qualitatively. But there is a huge difference between the values. So quantitative, there is a huge mismatch. But there was a lot of assumption made in the uh, initial model, and we decided to inve investigate these uh, reasons and decided to implement those reasons one by one, and I'll present the result of these different parameters. So yes, uh, as I mentioned that uh, matrix material behavior can be modeled by elastic plastic material, and so initially the model was considered as a, a isotropic hardening. And then we considered this model as a combined hardening, non uh hardening law. So this blue line represents the combined hardening model uh, strain life simulation data. And this black line represents the isotropic hardening simulation. And again, this data represents the experimental data. The conclusion from our work was that the hardening doesn't affect strain life behavior, because this was a strain life method, not the stress life method. The next parameter being uh, implemented was the effect of graphite shaped particle. As we, if we see the graphite, uh, this micrograph of any nodular cast iron, so we can see that all the particles are not perfectly sphere. So there is a possibility that there are some particles that are uh, elliptical and other shapes. So how can we quantify the shape of graphite particle? So to quantify the shape of graphite particle, we need uh, the, this is it is called shape factor, and it is defined by this equation, where A is the area of particle, and U is the uh, circumference of the particle. Where this area equation for elliptical uh, is given by pi AB, and 
this uh, circumference of elliptical is approximated. As we know, it's not possible to get an identical equation for ellipse square parameter uh, uh, circumference. So it's uh, uh, equivalence of this. If A is equal to B, means we are dealing with the perfect sphere, so it will turn to the uh, circular uh, for the spherical one. But if it is A is not equal to B, then we can define the area and U by these equations. As you can see, the same initial wide volume fraction for the both cases has been considered, but different shape has been considered. So now, if we see the result of this simulation, then if we see uh, this is the perfect sphere, S is equal to 1. And f, uh, if now as we increase the uh, decrease the shear factor, means we are trying to model elliptical graphite particle. The shape, uh, this fatigue lifetime is decreasing, and we are getting more actual realistic values of the fatigue life. So, and from the experimental uh, literature review, we found that uh, uh, shape value is equal to 0.70, which is quite realistic for GJS 400. So yeah, so as we I told you that s equal to 0.7, which can be, uh, it's, we can define for the EHGCS material. Now one of the question was like initially I told you that the graphite particle was modeled as uh, as model as a void, but what if we model graphite particle as a rigid particle, which doesn't experience any kind of deformation? So we do, uh, we decided to model graphite particle as a rigid particle, and uh, it was. The contact between the graphite particle and the meta, uh, matrix was defined as a friction light contact, and the graphite particle was fixed at the lines of symmetry. And again, the same simulation was performed, and we can see the result between, uh, of this. So if we model graphite as a rigid particle, then we are getting more realistic values for fatigue life. And now we can see that, OK, this our model is able to explain low cycle fatigue or ex extremely low cycle fatigue in nodular cast time, which is able to uh, qualitatively and quantitatively re replicate the experimental results. And now, uh, most of the engineering components are subjected to lo uh, this load sequence or multiple uh, loading. So we decided to investigate those effect using our micro-micro <coughs> material model. So what we have done was like that, uh, uh, to investigate this effect of uh, linear cumulative damage law proposed by Miner and Parkin was used. So we subjected this or model with different uh, this uh, loading spectrums where the strain issue uh, is minus one. So at delta E1 strain amplitude, we applied N1 number of cycles. At delta E2 strain amplitude, we applied N2 number of cycles. And when for independently when delta E1 and delta E2 are applied, strain amplitudes, the number of cycles through failure is NF1 and NF2. And now the result is like if we applied high-low strain amplitude sequence. So the data, this black line represent the ideal minor pumpkin hypothesis. And here is a D1 and here is a D2. But if we applied a high-low sequence cycle, then this data will fall above this line and if we apply low high cycle, then data will uh, follow below this line. So as we can see from this cow is like that, this simple micromical material model is able to also uh, predict this load, uh, load sequencing effect proposed by uh, Miner and Tom Green. And now another interesting point of nodal cast iron is like that it is available in various grades and different materials. If we perform different uh, heat treatment or we uh, produce different chemical composition, component, uh, composition, then we can change the easily metal matri uh, matrix material. So it has different uh, mechanical properties depending on various chemical composition, heat treatment. And we can study the, this strength effect on the fatigue life by varying this initial strength to um, a Young's modulus ratio. So as we see that from ductile line 400 to post tempered ductile line 1200, we are, we are increasing the strength of the matrix. And uh, the, if we perform the simulation, then the result is sh shown here. The conclusion from this result is like that at the lower strain amplitude, this, there is not significant influence of the strength of meta, uh, matrix on the low cycle fatigue behavior. But at the lower, two minutes. Yeah, last time. So at the lower strain amplitude, so if as we increase the uh, 
strength of the material, the fatigue life is increasing, and this can be correlated to high uh, plastic, uh, high uh, elastic strain present in the matrix at the low, uh, at the high strength. Yeah. And in nutshell, this 2D, uh, this axisymmetric cell model for the nodal cast has been proposed, and the main center point of this model is like it's really very simple. It doesn't use any that much uh, material parameters. If we can uh, simu uh, we can generate experimental as a, uh, this low cycle fatigue test data using just very basic uh, material properties like sun modulus, initial uh, yield stress, and hardening exponents and different hardening parameters. We don't need any other damage parameters to define the failure. And uh, Another interesting point, like we need also the information of my material microstructure, geometrical information, what kind of shape are, uh, is there, the particle, and like that. And as we see, as I already present you that uh, hardening type of the matrix doesn't affect that much on the strain life behavior, but graphite particle modeling has medium impact on the fatigue lifetime, and shape of graphite particle has a high influence on the fatigue lifetime. And I would like to acknowledge SAB for pro, uh, funding this work. And if you want to read more about this work, then you can refer this paper. Thank you very much.